former SARS executive and uh, whistleblower Johan von Lochenberg says his home has been broken into with copies of important documents being stolen. In a statement released through his lawyers, Van Lochenberg says he believes this is linked to his testimony at the state capture inquiry. He further claims he, was, he received threats uh, for several years now, adding that he remains undeterred. Van Lochenberg is the third whistleblower from the commission to be targeted in recent weeks. A former government communications and information system CEO Temba Masego revealed that his home was broken into last Friday, with burglars uh, leaving with nothing. His revelation comes after South African Airways whistleblower Cynthia Stimple recently claimed she was being followed. Now here to discuss further the rights and safety of whistleblowers, I'm now joined by political analyst Ramon Dow and Alta CEO Wayne Dubinage. Good evening to you and thank you very much for your time and uh, joining us uh, tonight here on In Focus. Wayne, we know that whistleblowers are an effective weapon against corruption. However, more and more we are seeing them being targeted, uh, being harassed, being burglared, being even murdered, actually, in, in, in some instances, is what we have uh, been, been able to see. My suspicion is, is that we are not acting with haste, uh, or at least with determination and visible action regarding this issue of whistleblower protection. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the anti-corruption forum or the strategy that has been ongoing for some time in its development has been... Uh, has not been uh, happening at the pace that it should have. And, and within that process is the question of how we deal with whistleblowers, how the state should be uh, introducing policies, processes, and, and, uh, and, and legislation that supports um, and, and gives protection or better protection to whistleblowers. So, you know, the more pressure that whistleblowers come under, in such cases uh, that has happened recently with Temba Maseko and now with uh, Mr. Van Lochrenberg uh, and others and the unfortunate, sad uh, murder of uh, Babita Diokaran, this doesn't bode well for people who have got important information, which we as civil society and the national prosecuting authorities need in order to prosecute state capture and uh, other crimes and corruption. So it's a blow uh, for the whole process of, of enabling uh, a moral courage to come forward uh, in, in, in whistleblowing. Rwani, is, is, is this retaliation, I mean, would it be read as retaliation? Uh, uh, Johan van Rochenberg saying uh, the, 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 the well-experienced uh, policeman he was, in fact, uh, but also in, 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 in forensic work, says he, he looked at four elements in this uh, burglary and how they, they tried to access his house from various points to say these were not just amateur criminals, these were sophisticated criminals uh, carrying out this mission. Yeah, look, um, I think Johan understands this uh, a lot more and he's um, got some experience in, in, in how these uh, operations take place. So I would imagine that he's applied his mind and his views are, are sound in, in this regard. And it comes on the back of uh, recent attempts to, to do similar burglaries at uh, Temba Maseko's place, a uh, residence. So... It is a concern. It's a serious concern. We hope that the authorities are taking it seriously and uh, are now taking note of how we can fast track the actions that are required by the states to, to protect whistleblowers and, and take far greater action than what they have been doing today. Continue more on this conversation when we continue next on In Focus. Uh, we have uh, Wayne Dubinage as well as Viboni Dow uh, with us uh, tonight. And uh, taking your views on Twitter, uh, also on 7 In Focus continues next.
my wife and I were asleep. At around quarter past three this morning, we heard, we heard sounds of footsteps in the roof, and I woke up, went to investigate, and through the bathroom window, I saw one chap actually in the roof, um, and my wife heard a few steps of somebody else in the other part of the bedroom. It's still an inexplicable why they left all the other rooms downstairs and it came to the roof. Their, their intentions was get to where we were sleeping, not to steal anything on the ground floor. So no first entry, nothing. No sign of how they actually climbed over the fence, electric fence, into, into our yard. So it is mysterious. The timing of the incident is also... My wife and I were asleep at around quarter past three this morning. We heard, we heard sounds of footsteps in the roof, and I woke up, went to investigate, and through the bathroom window, I saw one chap actually in the roof, um, and my wife heard a few steps of somebody else in the other part of the bedroom. It's still an inexplicable why they left all the other rooms downstairs and came to the roof of our, of, of, of our bedroom. That really rattled us. Uh, we called for support from the neighborhood security company. They came and um, warning shots were fired and the perpetrators basically disappeared in, into the night. Um, we live in a place that has very high walls and uh, electric fencing. The electric uh, fencing didn't seem to stop them. They got to as close to our bedroom, a few meters away from my windows. So it was a very scary, uh, scary event. It was very clear that the, the intentions was get to where we were sleeping, not to steal anything on the ground floor. So no first entry, nothing. No sign of how they actually climbed over the fence, electric fence, into, into our yard. So it is mysterious. The timing of the incident is also very suspicious because obviously it is a time when the Zondo report was released. Um, I'm still convinced that, in fact, we, we, our environment is very safe. But the fact that we're able to breach our security is something that, in my view, requires further investigation. At State uh, Capture Witness, the Temba Masego, last week uh, when an attempt uh, at uh, his house was made today, where uh, Johan van Lochenberg saying that if those who uh, perpetrated this crime happened to be connected to those I have implicated and believe that they've managed to deprive me of any evidence that implicates them through this crime, they are sadly mistaken. What they managed to steal are mere copies and the proper records are safely kept elsewhere. Reborning, suspicious house invasions, theft at homes of uh, state capture witnesses. Is, is this just sheer coincidence? Uh, is there something to this timing? Good evening, Chabo, and uh, my fellow panel and the viewers at home. I think one must start by saying that what is interesting is that um, both um, parties, um, they, they are quoted in part one of the report that came out you know, um, at the beginning of the year. But also, I want us to remember one thing, Chabo. You know, in 2017, Joe Nechisenza said something which was very interesting, that beneficiaries of state capture will not go down without a fight. So this is expected. That is not going to be an easy uh, road because of the recommendations that also um, the commission has made. You know, and people, are, people know that they're going to lose their, their livelihood, people are going to go to prison and so forth. So people are not, are not going to fold the, arm and, uh, the arms. And it's worrying that the state seems not to take this matter serious. I mean, right now, as we speak, we've got Ethel Williams, who's, who's in exile, you know, uh, I think in the UK, if I'm not wrong, um, who, whose life was also uh, under threat, you know, for 
having had appeared under the Zondo Commission. So it can't be that people in 2021, you have someone, in 2022, you have someone who's in exile. You know, this exile notion, I mean, it was during the apartheid era. Today, we've got our freedom and our democracy. This is so unacceptable. What, what do you think is happening within the, 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 the party itself and as far as their thinking? Why is there no focused or at least increased action uh, that will ensure that whistleblowers are protected? Within the party, you mean the ruling party? Yeah. I mean, also what was interesting, I mean, when we had um, the national chair of the ANC on the sidelines of the general age, you know, saying that this report must not be used to purge others, this report must be used to self-correct, self and uh, which is a bit worrying that such has been said when the state has lost so many millions you know, through corruption, that today the country is uh, struggling economically through this corruption that happened for such a, such a very lo long time. Uh, this report can be treated as a self-correcting report, you know. People should be held accountable. So it will be very interesting, I mean, one uh, ways to see even then the, the next national executive committee meeting, when will it take place? And one would have thought that since this is a matter of agency, you know, the issue of the report being out, let the NEC also see it and also reflect on what does this mean for some of those who are implicated, who are within the party, you know, although yes, they've not been charged and so forth, but uh, it's really worrying that the party also seems to be very casual. And hearing this from the national chair, who's a cabinet member. Yeah. Wait, is, is there uh, enough in our legal system to be able to, to support uh, the, the work of whistleblowers, to protect them and ensure that uh, they are uh, well kept? Uh, and therefore, we really don't need to inject anything new into the legislation. Or is it a case of something new or there needs to be some amendments that need to happen? Yeah, look, if you, li if you listen to the various whistleblower groups and whistleblowers themselves who are having to, to self-protect almost um, and, and engage with each other to find better ways to, to deal with this problem, their views are loud and clear. The Whistleblower Protection Act and, uh, and the laws that surround protection of whistleblowers is insufficient. It's not doing enough. But, you know, whistleblowers don't just need laws. They need, they need support. They need to feel that they are safe. They need to know that if they lose their livelihoods, as we've seen in many of these state-owned entities where they get removed and the might of uh, citizens' taxpayers' money is used in labor cases against them. We've seen it in PRASA. Uh, we've seen it in uh, uh, SAA, uh, in, in ESTEM, in many places. We need to... The, the, the whistleblower f f believes that they need to feel safe and, and supported in times like that. Uh, you know, the Zonda Commission uh, in, in part one of the report has started to give some good input as to, as to what needs to happen to protect whistleblowers. It's not just about the law. It's about um, ensuring that their, uh, their safety is, is, is there as well as the, their ability to fight court challenges that are brought against them, uh, to live and to survive after being kicked out of their jobs, uh, suspended, uh, fired, uh, nowhere to go. It's a very, very frightening place. And unless we put uh, greater protection and support behind whistleblowers, uh, I'm afraid this type of activity that's unfolding is, uh, is going to thwart the efforts um, that we need as civil society to, to get all the evidence we can. Yeah. Uh, and the Zonda report is, is going to now highlight that. Now, th this part one of the report uh, stipulating uh, there, Wayne, that uh, the uh, protection of uh, whistleblowers should... Uh, adhere to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, uh, citing Article 32, subsection 2 there. What, 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 what is the degree then of uh, protection that is stipulated there? I mean, uh, in a sense, it says established procedures for the physical protection of whistleblowers. What, what, what would that uh, look like in practical terms? Well, I think um, people who are, uh, first of all, let's take uh, people who are in the um, Zonda Commission's report, whistleblowers named there. You can see already what is happening. As you said earlier, Cynthia Stimple, I believe she's being followed. Uh, we see what's happened now in, in the report earlier from Temba Maseko and now for, from Jan van Lochenberg. So I would imagine those individuals right now qualify for security for police security uh, and guards at their homes, uh, if they so wished to have that, uh, and other uh, um, initiatives put in place to make them feel safer 
and that their uh, homes and residences cannot be infiltrated. That would be one uh, um, place to start at least. Uh, and, then, and then let's talk about the others after that. But let's protect them and their families. Raboni, we are, of course, also looking at the fact that uh, these uh, uh, investigations, or at least what's coming out, those recommendations of the uh, report of the State Capture Commission will be carried out. And the NPA here needs to be playing a, a serious role in, in ensuring that these uh, uh, individuals who are mentioned are arrested. Other moves that you are seeing, particularly in uh, strengthening the NPA, we, we know we've seen some changes now in state security, which I suppose has got to do a lot with the protection uh, of um, a key uh, national institutions. The president himself, uh, seemingly uh, at some point, uh, his, his, his security being a little bit risky. But uh, at the NPA, uh, are we seeing any moves? I mean, we have... Sir. Well, we have seen, I mean, in the past few days where the NPA had even said that uh, they will set up a special unit that will deal uh, with the Zondo Commission recommendations. But also, um, there's also a challenge with the NPA in terms of resources. So they will, the government will have to put more resources into the NPA, NPA and make sure that they, got, they get good prosecutors for these things to go through. Because if you, if you don't have good prosecutors, it's going to be a challenge, you know, because either way, these guys will also come and get um, best lawyers to make sure that they fight um, some of these allegations against them. Yeah. Wayne, you wanted to weigh in on that? Yeah, no, just, we just um, believe that the NPA is, is grossly undercapacitated, not, and it's not about throwing heads at the problem. It's about throwing the necessary skills and support. For too long now, um, we've seen little happening. So much should have flowed in uh, concurrently while the Zonda Commission was uh, uh, compiling and doing, going through the hearings. And we sit here today, uh, uh, you know, nearly...